So I wanted to take a minute to jump out of the studio to some place where I'm more comfortable, and that's a place where I can sit and work with my computer where it's laid out. Uh, this is a pretty typical editing scenario for me where I've got my laptop, I've got a keyboard. For me, I use a trackball or a mouse. When you edit, you use a lot of keyboard functions and you mouse a lot. So having some place that's really comfortable is really important. The other thing that I want to point out is it's also really important that you think about using an external hard drive. An external hard drive is going to help you in managing your media. Video files get really big really fast and they tend to leave little breadcrumbs, little files scattered around your computer. And so it's really important that you manage all of those files, otherwise you're going to find you're filling up the hard drive on your computer really quickly. For me, I use either a FireWire drive or a USB 2 or USB 3 uh, external drive. Uh, I create a folder where I put all of the assets that I'll use for my project into that folder so that when I go to archive it or when I go to restore it, I'm not looking for things that are scattered all over a network or scattered all over my computer. I've put all of my graphics, all of my audio. If I'm capturing video from tape, I'll capture to that folder. Uh, if I'm pulling a file off a hard drive or off a compact flash disk, I'll also put that in that folder. I'll consolidate all of the assets in one central place and then begin my project. By gathering all of those assets early on, it makes things go a lot smoother, not only in the process of editing, but often you're gonna have to revisit a project multiple times, or you may want to leverage media in more than one project uh, to be able to uh, uh, use an interview going forward a year from now, two years from now. So it's really wise just to have good drive hygiene, so to speak, to go through and make certain that you've done a good job of organizing your assets and have them all in one central location. So today I'll be using Premiere Elements. Within that application, you're gonna find that a lot of the things that I talk about are applicable whether you're in Sony Vegas, Premiere Pro, Media Composer, Final Cut Pro. I'm not gonna teach you necessarily how to use this application today, but I wanna give you an understanding so maybe the process of editing feels a little less intimidating. So when you launch the application, the first thing that comes up is a window. I'm gonna create a new project for us today. Uh, and the window will go through and you'll see that it'll load and it's gonna come up with some screens. It's gonna prompt you for some questions in terms of what are you going to name it? What type of files are you using? So today we'll call this edit demo. Makes the most sense. Uh, here I'm saving it into that folder, which I would recommend, and I can put it here in my folder and create a new folder and we'll call this edit demo, hit OK, and then it asks you what settings are you going to use, what sorts of media are you going to use. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use media from all sorts of sources. Some of it is HD, some of it comes from an iPhone, some of it from a DSLR. That can be really tricky, so you need to go through and try to figure out what's gonna be the best setting to manage all of those different files. Today, for my purposes, I'm going to use the NTSC Flip Minnow setting. Uh, for this demonstration, it works well, but most of you are going to be gathering content all from one central source, and you'll find that when you go in to change the settings, it gives you all sorts of opportunities. Are you running DV? Are you coming from a digital single lens reflex camera? Um, are you uh, HDV? Are you coming from a hard disk? All sorts of options which will help maximize the efficiency of how the software processes the video and uses the video. So today I'll be using the NTSC and you'll notice the uh, application pops up into three large areas. This one is the canvas. This is where your video is actually going to play. This is the project folder. It's a lot like a browser window with uh, uh, folders when you're working in either a Macintosh or a PC where you've got folder structures and these are the thumbnails of the assets that are in that folder. This section down here is called the timeline. Now the timeline can be a little hard to get used to at first if you haven't worked with it before. This is a rather traditional editing, nonlinear editing scenario. And the timeline is in essence a representation of your video over time. 
Not the way you see it in a TV where it just plays one image after another, but it's how you can sequentially work uh, over time with a, with a series of images and sounds. I sometimes liken it to word processing tipped on its side. When word processing, you move one paragraph and another paragraph and you go, no, I'd like to move this paragraph up here. Nonlinear editing is that process tipped on its side where you have this shot and this shot and you go, no, I think I'd like to put one before the other. Same process of grabbing something and moving it or cut and paste. So these are the three basic uh, areas. The first thing we need to do is we need to capture some media into the system. You need to get video clips and audio clips, things that you can use. So I'm going to go up here in this application, I'm going to select Get Media. It's different for all the applications, but for this one, they make it fairly simple. You'll see that there are a number of different ways you can capture media uh, into your system, whether it's coming from a, a camcorder, a DV or HDV camcorder, whether it's coming from a device like a Flip or something that uses AVC HD, uh, whether it's coming from a still camera. For this application, we're going to gather the media from uh, a central folder where all of the media is located. And I can go and find that media to edit demo. And you'll see in the folder here, I have media and up comes an array of thumbnails, many of which have different looks to them. Some have sprocket holes, some don't. The sprocket holes are video files and the ones without are still photos. You'll also notice that there's a music file down here which just comes up as a note. Uh, I can bring in all of these assets, but to get started, I think I'm just going to take this one with the woman and the talking head. I'm going to select that by clicking on it and click open. The media comes in and you'll notice now that icon is in the browser window. We've got a thumbnail of this video.